Over the village of Vaux, both planes narrowly missed the church belfry. Meanwhile, Captain Brown dives steeply to make his attack on the Baron. He unleashes a quick burst of fire and pulls up and away sharply to avoid hitting the ground. The Baron continues his pursuit of May up the steep slope of the Morlancourt Ridge. Over the crest of the ridge, Australian gunners Buey and Evans let rip with their Lewis machine guns. And just below the crest of the ridge, another Australian, Sergeant Cedric Popkin, swings his Vickers machine gun into action. The red triplane makes a sharp turn back toward the German lines, then stalls and lands roughly in a nearby field. Lieutenant May is saved. There was a cloud of dust, and then at that point my dad quickly flew over the scene and then headed back to Bertong to the airdrome. Manfred von Richthofen, the greatest ace of World War I, was dead, shot through the chest by a single bullet. Why did Germany's master tactician break his own rules, pursuing Wilfred May far into enemy territory, low down and all alone? A crucial factor may have been the change in the wind direction. Instead of the normal west to east, it had turned east to west, and it probably carried von Richthofen over the Allied lines far more quickly than he anticipated. It's very easy to get incredibly disorientated uh, when you're that low down because all your landmarks have gone. You can't see that village, you can't see that church spire, you can't see that enemy battery over there. Von Richthofen is at fault in not watching behind him and taking care of his own security as he usually did. It's a case of target fixation and he's got, he's got tunnel vision focused exclusively on his target. I think he broke his own rules because he was suffering from post-traumatic stress and he didn't care anymore. He didn't really want to fight, but he was not able to let himself be taken away from combat. He didn't want to shirk his duty, so he just let whatever happened, happen. Yes, he uh, disobeyed his own rules uh, for reasons uh, which we uh, uh, do not know, which we cannot pursue nowadays, but he did, and he paid it with his life. Von Richthofen's uncharacteristic errors have perplexed scholars, but above all, controversy continues over who brought him down. The RAF officially credited the kill to Captain Roy Brown of 209 Squadron. But was it, in fact, a bullet from Brown that struck the Baron? My dad didn't see Roy Brown attack the Red Baron's aircraft. All he saw was that the Red Baron all of a sudden turned away and broke off the fight. Uh, after he talked to Roy, and Roy said, I, you know, I came in and I shot at the aircraft, he said, then you saved my life. Von Richthofen's body was taken to an RAF base at Poulenville, where several medical examinations were carried out. They showed that he had been mortally wounded by a single 303 bullet that entered several inches below the right armpit and passed up through the chest, emerging just below the left nipple. Both Allied aircraft and ground gunners used the same 303 ammunition. The direction, distance, and timing of this fatal shot are vital clues that have been constantly debated. Starting from the medical reports, author and aviation historian Norman Franks has been reinvestigating the mystery. Once we looked at the pathology, I interviewed two or three eminent pathologists, and they said that the sort of wound that he would have uh, suffered 
would have given him no more than 12 to 20 seconds of life once he was hit. Just enough to get down. I've spoken, I've asked a few pilots about this, those that were there, and one in particular, uh, Rudolf Stack, a Bavarian, he was flying that morning, and he reckons that Richthofen was still alive when he landed, because he said the triplane was so touchy to fly, it was absolutely impossible for it to land smoothly on its own. Although mortally wounded, had von Richthofen somehow managed to wrestle his aircraft safely to the ground? Eighty years after the event, an important new piece of evidence surfaced in a letter from the son of an Allied soldier who claimed to be the first to reach the crashed triplane. My father's officer sent my father down to take the pilot prisoner, which my father did. My father was the first man to the aircraft, and the pilot tried to say something in German to my father. The pilot then sighed and died. This added a whole new dimension to the final moments of Richthofen's life and, and confirmed that the aircraft came down intact, uh, it was practically flown down, Richthofen was still alive, which nobody had known about before. If von Richthofen was still alive on the ground, the shooter must have fired at him no more than 20 seconds or so before he landed. Was Captain Brown at the right spot and at the right angle to have fired the fatal shot? a second new piece of evidence now emerged. It was a large collection of correspondence from the 1930s between a former World War II RAF officer and surviving witnesses of the Baron's last flight. It had lain neglected for 60 years. In the collection was a letter from an Australian engineer called Derbyshire who was watching the action from the Somme Canal. Crucially, he was in a position to see both von Richthofen and Captain Brown. I turned to look at the two leading planes just going over the ridge, heard a burst of gunfire and the Fokker stopped in its stride and did the first half of a loop, then straightened out and fluttered down out of sight as if doing a pancake landing. By this time, the third plane was just approaching the ridge. I was amazed later to hear that the Hun was brought down by a plane as the chaser was not firing at the time the Germans stopped. Derbyshire's statement was a vital clue. He saw the triplane coming back over the ridge, rear up, and then crunch down in a forced landing. That, to us, indicated when he was hit, which was way past Brown's attack. After the war, Captain Roy Brown chose not to make further statements about his attack on the Red Baron. Roy uh, was quite convinced he had shot that red triplane down and uh, he never wavered from that. If there was any reticence, it's just that, that he, he hated the war. He was a sick man at this point. He was looking out for his men, um, worried about them all and uh, not wanting to, to become a hero in anybody's eyes. He was just doing a job. When contacted in the 1930s, Roy Brown continued to refuse to answer any direct questions. There's no point in my making any statement when official records are in existence. Captain Brown probably fired on von Richthofen from behind and above left. But as the medical reports showed, the Baron was hit by an upward traveling shot to the right side. After more than 80 years, most of the evidence fails to support Brown's claim. So who did fire the fatal shot? Ballistics tests can reveal the effect of a bullet fired from different ranges. Three, two, one. When a human body is hit, there's an explosive effect called hydrostatic shock. The closer the range, the greater the wound damage. If the bullet had struck von Richthofen at close range, I would have expected a more explosive type wound. Now the evidence is that the wounds were actually probed by the, uh, the medical staff after he'd been uh, shot down, and they were actually able to follow the bullet path through the body.
A low damage, low velocity hit would indicate a long range shot. Moreover, one of the medical orderlies actually found the 303 bullet that had killed the Baron. The fact that the bullet was found intact inside the clothing of uh, Richthofen is another indicator that it was a long range shot. And I would say that would be probably 600 yards plus. Australian gunners Buey and Evans were in range and could have hit von Richthofen, as they claimed, some 20 or 30 seconds before he is known to have died. But by their own testimony, they were firing face on to the triplane, so they could not have hit von Richthofen on the right hand side. So we asked our gun expert, what do we need to, to look at? And he said, have you got somebody who knows what they're doing 600 yards away and he's firing at von Richthofen's right side? We said, yes. He said, there's your man. Perched on the slope was the Australian gunnery sergeant, Cedric Popkin. He had followed the fight and now swung his Vickers gun through 180 degrees in case the red triplane reappeared. He was in luck. In our view and final analysis, the best candidate for bringing down von Richthofen was Cedric Popkin, Australian sergeant, machine gunner. Though he was their greatest foe, the Allies buried Manfred von Richthofen alongside their own dead on April 22nd, 1918, with full military honors. It is very sad and ironic that he was killed at the height of his competence and success. Uh, on the other hand, he would not have survived uh, as a kind of symbol uh, for chivalrous warfare um, as he has uh, in being killed. With the new evidence about von Richthofen's death, we may be closer to the truth, but eyewitness testimony always leaves room for doubt. The circumstances surrounding the Baron's death will continue to be shrouded in mystery. I don't think that the, the world will ever know for sure who shot the Red Baron down. That's a question that will go on in the minds of people for years and years and years. In death, Manfred von Richthofen became an icon of a period that saw the dawn of aerial combat and modern warfare. His legend grew, not merely because of his 80 victories, a score which would not be beaten until World War II, but because his dashing career recalls a brief era of innovation and heroism, although it came at unthinkable cost to human life. I think the Red Baron's real achievement was his legacy of squadron tactics. And it wasn't just that he developed them, but he actually wrote them down so that people could use them, and still do use them today. His other achievement was uh, his love of technology and pushing to get the best aircraft produced as quickly as possible. In four short years, aerial combat had evolved from an amateurish sport to a deadly, efficient killing operation. But now, the evidence of von Richthofen's death suggests a final irony. If he indeed was killed in action by an old-fashioned gun from the ground, the Red Baron may never have lost a dogfight. <laughs>